So um, let's go ahead and start by sitting in your most comfortable sitting position. Um, so if anybody um, wants to double up their yoga mat or bolster or blanket, just sit with your eyes closed. And let's work a little bit with sitting upright. So we won't be here long, but always make yourself comfortable in every in every moment of the class. So my suggestion is sitting cross-legged, but you could also bring your legs out in front or you can lean against the wall. Okay, so with your eyes closed, just begin tipping your pelvis backward and forward. So you're kind of rolling on whatever you're sitting on. Just begin to feel the tip of the tailbone. And relax your shoulders. Great, and then come back to center. And then experiment as if your heart was a flower and it's blooming, so there's an expression through the chest. And to do that, the shoulders drop back and down a little bit. It's not forcing it. There's just a feeling of expressing outward from the heart. And then lifting up through the crown, the top of the head, as if there's a string pulling you to the ceiling, and then drop the chin. And then the upper and lower teeth are relaxed. <laughs> upper and lower teeth are relaxed. <laughs> I don't know how to relax the teeth. <laughs> the jaw. <laughs> uh, upper and lower jaw. So there's separation between your teeth, upper and lower, and then tongue is relaxed. Eyes are relaxed. Forehead relaxed. Soften the shoulders. Soften the belly. And then let's take a few cleansing breaths again together in this position. Deep breath in through the nose, out through the mouth. And again together, inhale. Softening, melting, grounding, inhale. Beautiful. And let's just start scanning our body for sensations, starting with the toes. Bring all of your awareness to your toes. We're shifting brain waves now into more of an alpha state, which is really great for learning. So feel the sensation of the balls of the feet, the arches, the heel. Feel the ankles. Feel the length of the bone from the ankles to the knees. Surround your awareness, both knees, and notice any sensation that might be there. Feel the top of the legs, quadriceps, and behind the leg, the hamstring. And notice where all the points of your body that are touching the floor, your sit bones, the buttocks, Bring all of your awareness to the bowl of your pelvis, the insides of your belly, and as you breathe, just soften the organs. Bring some space using your breath. Notice as you breathe, the chest expands slightly on the inhale. And then notice how your body kind of drops down and inward on the exhale. It's a nice time to practice slowing down the breath and a little fuller breath without forcing. Just creating a really comfortable rhythm. The collarbones also lift on the inhale slightly. To the center of your chest, to your heart, Use your imagination and wrap your awareness around the physical heart with a beautiful glowing color. Bring your favorite color, or colors, plural, to the area of your heart, creating space with your breath for the heart to slow down.
bringing peace and calm to your system through intention in this meditation. Just letting go of all non-beneficial energies right now. Just imagine they're evaporating so that your full self can be present. Oh. body, connecting in a state of gratitude that we could be here together, thanking the breath, bones, organs, and tissues, saying thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, now that we've created this beautiful inward focus, let's continue with this through the next hour and a half and let's warm up the neck by dropping the chin to the chest feel free to change the position that you're sitting in if you need to always stay comfortable so drawing the head over to the right shoulder tipping your head back it doesn't need to go back far but you can squeeze your shoulder blades together and then the left ear comes to the left shoulder and then chin comes to chest and just let yourself round over a little bit let your belly button come in and then let's continue with the circle so right ear to right shoulder shoulder blades squeeze together left ear to left shoulder and then let your shoulders round tuck the belly in so at your own pace make this an organic movement and let's just move nice and slow Just notice if you're storing any tension in the neck and let's use this movement to start opening up those tight spots. And also let your lower spine move as well. In fact, I'll be encouraging you to always bring movement that makes you feel comfortable. Perhaps some of the movements you'll be moving into some discomfort, but hopefully it also feels good at the same time. Beautiful. And then find some easy way to reverse directions. Keep working to expand your breath. As one ear comes to the shoulder, use your opposite shoulder to wiggle a little bit. See if you can get a deeper stretch. And always feel free to make an audible sound. I love it when you guys do that. <laughs> and I know Earhart loves to do it too, so feel free. It's nice to move the energy through sound and vibration. Ah. Yeah, and let's come back to center and roll your shoulders back, nice big circles. <sighs> and reverse the circles. And come back to center, relax, let's pause for a moment. And then this next sequence is called nodding yes. So please bring your right ear over to your right shoulder and just move the chin forward and backward. And as you move your shoulder forward and backward, on the right side, begin wiggling your left shoulder down forward and backward. So the idea is to get a nice long stretch on the left side of your neck and Feel the connection down beneath the collarbone. And you can let the pelvis move as well, but focusing on the left side of the neck. Next time the chin is close to the chest, let's roll over to the other side. Left ear to left shoulder. 
nodding forward and backward, and then the right shoulder just plays with the movement. It's all about discovery. Every movement is an exploration. That's why I like to ask you guys to keep your eyes closed so you can really fine tune what you're feeling and let your body guide you into these movements. Soma actually means mind and body are one. So soma is the root word for somatics. Next time your chin is to the chest, let's roll over to the other side, right side. This time let's add a little self-massage. So bring your right hand over to your the left side of your neck. And as you nod forward and backward with the chin, the right fingertips are finding your sore spots. Does anybody have sore spots? Yeah. <laughs> so discover those spots and then you could either use your fingers like playing piano, like keys of the piano, you can use your fingers up and down, or you can find a knot and just press firmly and just make small circles. left shoulder still wiggling a little bit. Does that feel good? All right. Next time the chin is to the chest, let's do the other side. Left side, left hand comes up over to the right shoulder. And we're just inviting through our touch those muscles to let go. This is a great one to use if you on the computer for long periods of time, you, you just pause and come into this sequence. It's one of my favorite ones to do myself. Take a little break. And as you're doing this, make sure that your jaw is still relaxed. You're not holding any tension in your legs or your pelvis. And then when your chin comes back to center, release the hand and let's come up to center and then roll the shoulders back, big circles. Just kind of undulating with your upper body. Ah, thank you. All right. Let's, let's all unwind and reverse directions. Ah. Nice, Linda. Love it. Oh, okay. Yeah, cool. I always learn from you guys, so it's fun to see how you end up expressing yourself. Let's come back to center and pause for a moment. Eyes closed. Notice how you feel. I like to pause through all these movements so you could um, notice the benefits of your efforts. All right. So this next one is called the Egyptian and also heart activation. So if you bring your palms face down on the knees and open up your elbows and lean to the right. Don't mirror me, don't mirror me because I can't do it very well. <laughs> and to the left, some instructors can do that, but I always, I'm very dyslexic. So <laughs> let's try it again. Let's move to the right. And so imagine you're creating space between your right armpit and your right hip and to the left. Imagine your arm is wrapping around a big ball. So the hips stay down on the floor the whole time, as best you can. And you're isolating your rib cage. And let's come back to center. Let's reverse that by tucking the chin and rounding the shoulders coming forward, pelvis is forward. And then reverse that, bring the shoulders back and then lead with the heart. And the head tips back just a little bit. And then again, round the shoulders, chin to chest. And at your own pace, just moving forward and backward. Ah. Your pace is wonderful, you guys. Awesome, nice and slow and smooth. All right, coming back to center. Let's create a circle with those movements. 
So first, open up to the right with the right, right elbow leading. And now let's circle a half of a turn behind so the chin drops to the chest. And now lead with the left elbow and then guide with the heart. So close your eyes and create nice, big, round circles. You're massaging the organs and also the perineum on the floor, opening the first chakra. Maybe you can even imagine and visualize a beautiful red glowing light at the base of the spine. Ah. Creating space in the ribs. Ah. Nice. Find a way to reverse. Nice organic movement. doing awesome. Beautiful. How about we do one more time to the uh, right, let's reverse the movement, just for a few rotations, maybe even picking up the pace slightly. Really feel the spiral of this movement. Visualize from the base of your spine and how there's this corkscrew effect going all the way up through and up and out. And reverse. Maybe in this direction, create a smaller movement just for fun, just to play with it. Create a smaller spiral. Fine tuning the movement with the base of your spine. And then come back to center. All right. And if you can, if you're sitting on something, you might want to move the bolster away a little bit. Bring your hands behind you. Balancing on your knees, if you can, lift your hips up to whatever is comfortable for you and express to the heart. You don't need to tip your head back real far, but imagine your heart is just beaming. Beautiful emerald green lights. Deep breath in. Exhale, come down. And however you can, come forward into a fold Never pushing past your limits. We're just still warming up. Relax the neck. Relax the head. Let's peel and uncurl back up. And we're going to do this again. And as you come up, let's take an in-breath as we bring the shoulder blades back. Open the pelvis. Express openness, transparency, and then come down and just reverse the movement, curl forward, and relax, let go. This, is, this feels so good to me, let's do it again. Inhale on the way up, just curl up. Wrap your awareness around your heart again and just see it glowing, opening, expanding. Extra breath, and exhale coming down and folding forward. Just take a few breaths here. Let everything go. Check in with your neck. Make sure that your neck is relaxed. Ah. Beautiful. And coming up one vertebrae at a time. Close your eyes and notice how you feel, perhaps bringing the hands, palms facing up on top of the knee. Let all the instructions go, notice how you feel. Relaxing the shoulders, relax the belly. Softening the face. And just come back to neutral and please find yourself on your mat, laying down on your back with your knees bent, feet hip width apart. So I forgot to uh, mention a couple of tips that you can do while doing these somatic movements. The first tip is 
as you're doing this and you find a, a part of your body that's really uncomfortable, there's something that I call the feathering technique. So let's say um, as you lift your shoulder, there's a bit of a pain. To be able to um, work into that spot, you want to just greet it, meet it, and then back off a little bit. So you greet it again, you go back into it, and you back, back off a little bit. So all these movements, um, remember that tip. And of course, if you have a question, raise your hand, I'm happy to come over. So um, with your fingertips behind your head, I'm going to guide you through the cat stretch. This is something I do in all my classes. These four movements actually access almost all the major muscles in your body. So it's great. It's another warm up for the rest of the exercises. So the finger, fingers are interlaced behind your head. And the feet are hip width apart, flat on the floor. And then begin arching your neck so that the chin comes back a little bit and the elbows press back a little bit. And then arch your lower back so there's space between your back and the floor. And then pressing your back flat against the floor, lift your head, chin to chest, elbows together, and tip your pelvis towards your chin. So the hips are still on the floor. And then inhale, let's use a breath coming down. Chin tips back, elbows tip back back arches, and then exhale, flatten, and come up into a nice conscious sit-up, elbows together. So as you come down, notice how all the muscles in your back body contract, and then as you come up, all the muscles in the front body contract. Belly button in towards the spine, exhale. So at your own pace. Eyes are closed, you can keep that inward focus. Ah, wonderful. So you're engaging your core muscles. This is a great way to bring mobility to the spine. As best you can, bring a lot of focus to the lower part of your spine. Play a game with awareness and see if you can create a little bit more movement in the lowest part of your spine. Beautiful. Maybe two more. So this is the first part of four instructions, four different instructions in the cat stretch. Nice to hear your breath. Thank you. All right. And after this next one, then please roll over onto your belly. And bring your left arm down by your side. Left arm, left arm down by your side, Earhart. Other left. Left arm down by your side. And bend your right elbow and slide your palm, your right palm underneath your cheek. So everybody's looking over at the right elbow. Cheek of the face. The cheek of the face. Yes. <laughs> I'd like to see you try to do the other cheek. That would be interesting. <laughs> All right, so keep your, keep your hand connected to your face. You're looking over at your right elbow. And then lift your head and your hand and your right elbow off the floor. Perfect. And slowly come down. Let it all go. And now lift your left leg, leading with the heel up towards the ceiling and lift your right elbow and head off the floor. So your left leg and your right arm and shoulder are lifting and then coming back down. Perfect. Can you just, yes. Can you rotate kind of onto the shoulder, like my shoulder lifts when I lift. So which, which shoulder? My, my left one. Thank you. So Linda was asking a really good question. The left shoulder wants to lift in this movement, but as best you can, keep your left shoulder on the floor relaxed. It takes a little bit of effort if this is your first time. So you're really challenging your brain to isolate the right upper body and the left lower body. Great, and as a variation, you can also add a slight twist. So if you want to, you can lift the right elbow and turn a little bit behind. So notice your back muscles engaging as you come up, and also the gluteal muscle, the piriformis, and relax, resting between each repetition, beautiful. And let's switch sides.
So the left hand is underneath the right cheek, the right face cheek. <laughs> and when you're ready, go ahead and lift the left elbow, the head, and the right leg leading with the heel. And slowly come down. Ah, I've been resting between each repetition. Remembering that I offered you the feathering technique, so it doesn't matter how high you lift up necessarily, it's more the exploration of what muscles are you using to engage. This also takes a lot of coordination with the brain. So relax all the muscles you're not needing to use. Beautiful. So you can relax your hand. There you go. Great. Nice, Justine. And next time you're down, let it all go. And then please roll over onto your right side. With your knees bent, right angles to your hips. And the bottom arm is kind of, you could either rest your shoulder, um, your bottom shoulder you know, on your head, or your head resting on your shoulder, excuse me. <laughs> and then with your top arm, reach over the top of your head to touch your opposite ear. So the left hand is gonna touch the right ear and you're cradling your head. Keeping your knees together, just lift the top ankle to the ceiling. Beautiful. Notice what happens in the hip area. Slowly come down. And then do that again. Notice what happens from the knee to the hip. So the the feet are um, are the bottom foot is on the floor, and just the top foot is lifting. Oh, bottom foot stays on the floor. There, oh, knees stay together. There you go. It's like patting your head and rubbing your belly at the same time. Now lift your upper body into a side sit up, as if you're crunching. So the left elbow comes towards the left hip as the top ankle lifts towards the ceiling. Beautiful. You can exhale on the way up if you'd like, and inhale on the way down. The idea is that you're shortening your side body on the way up, and then you're lengthening your side body on the way down. Can you feel those muscles in between the ribs and underneath the armpit? and also the obliques. So keep your knees together and just lift the top ankle. There you go. That's it. There you go, you have it. Good. One more time, nice you guys. Let me hear your breath. Exhale on the way up. Inhale and lengthen on the way down. And then when you're finished with the next repetition, let's change sides. So I call this side crunches. That's the third part of the movement. Is everybody comfortable with the temperature in here? Everybody okay? A little, a little chilly, but I might be right. A little chilly? Okay, I can turn it down too in just a second. Yeah. Okay. After, after. We'll probably warm up and uh, I don't know, we might be dropping, but after, after we're done with the cat stretch, I'll turn it down. Okay. Okay, so bend your knees at right angles from your hips and wrap your top arm over your head and when you're ready, come up into a side sit-up. Going nice and slow and smooth. That's another tip in all these movements is to make it smooth. That's part of the re-education is the brain controlling the movement. As you come down, take a nice deep breath. So you're expanding your capacity to breathe right now because sometimes the intercostals can get really tight from shallow breathing. So actually this movement is gonna increase your lung capacity. Beautiful. One more time, exhale on the way up. Lift that top ankle. Great, and then inhale on the way down. 
All right, good job. All right, then please roll over onto your back. This last one of the, the fourth part of the series is a little bit like the arch and flatten, but we're going to add a twist, and that's to affect the um, transverse muscles. So bend your knees, feet are hip-width apart. Place your right hand behind your head. Your left arm is down by your side. And then arch your lower back and arch your neck and look over your right elbow. Press your right elbow down into the floor. And now exhale, flatten your back and bring your left knee to meet your elbow. Place the left foot back on the floor, arch your lower back, arch your neck, look over the right elbow, press the right elbow down, and then as you come up, feel the muscles that you're using to make this twist. You can even guide your elbow either to the outside or to the inside of the knee. It doesn't have to go straight up. In fact, try it at different angles. Can you feel the muscles kind of crisscrossing as you engage? Yeah? Good. Thanks. <laughs> so you're going to come up um, into a sit up, bringing this knee over to this elbow. This is going to cross. Yeah, there you go. And take some of the effort out of it so you're not um, efforting so much. Make it a little more smooth. There you go. Perfect. Job. How are you guys doing over here? And this foot can come down to the floor. There you go. And let's change sides. Left hand behind the head. The hand often in somatic movements we're always trying to protect the neck muscles because they're often overworked. So that's the reason why the left hand is behind you. So let's come up um, on the exhale, crossing over. So you guys, when you're bringing your left elbow to the floor and pressing it, there's a slight lift with the upper left chest. What, what's going on, Linda? <laughs> Justine makes me laugh. is making you laugh? I know. <laughs> what? Oh, I'm glad. I hope you guys can be silly. I mean, I'm a total goofball. And I'm not teaching, so we got to have fun. All right, one more time. Inhale on the way down. Notice which muscles you're using. And then on your next exhale, bring your arms and legs down. Did you see arch the hip? The lower when back. you go down? When you go down and arch you it. flatten on the way up. Okay. Oh, okay, so I'm doing it wrong then. Oh, so you want to show me? Okay. Uh, so it's going to be this knee is going to come up over. Yes, now you're flat. Oh. And as yeah. you come down, then arch. you arch. Okay. Yeah. Exit. There you go. Perfect. All right. So arms and legs down, palms facing up. This is one of many little shavasanas we're going to do. So take advantage of this moment to scan your body and notice how you feel. Ah. <sighs> If you still have pre if you still have pressure in your lower back, then you can keep your knees bent. And you're really connecting with your energy body, and that's what you're feeling. Yeah. Is your aura actually expanding? So I think that's pretty cool. My newsletter is also called Somatic Buzz, and that's actually what I mean. I'll have to announce that sometime. So anyway, tune, tune in and just notice just the smallest subtle sensation. All right. Let's move on to keep loosening up the lower back a little bit. So uh, please bend your knees again if they're not already. This is called beads on a necklace. 
So when you're ready, uh, pressing firmly on both feet, engage your quadriceps and lift your hips off the floor as if you're coming into the bridge pose. And then shrug your shoulders. And then slowly release the shoulders and let each vertebra come down one at a time. And when your last vertebrae in your pelvis touches the floor, then arch your pelvis so that the very tip touches the floor, and then reverse it. Peel one vertebrae off the floor, tuck your pelvis and lift the hips, nice and slow. When you're at the top, shrug your shoulders so that you can make contact with those upper vertebrae, vertebra, and then slowly come down and make it a game of awareness so that you can bring Well, what's happening is all the muscles surrounding each vertebrae is softening when you touch the floor. So at your own pace. I like to visualize each vertebrae when, they, when it touches the floor going off like a Christmas light. There might be parts of your back that you may not have so much control, in other words, some of you might feel your body going down in sections, and that's okay, but over time, you're gonna start feeling, uh, well, you're gonna be fine-tuning the movement so that you can break it down a little farther. Nice focus, everyone. Ah. All right. Let's transition from here, so I'll wait until everybody's hips are back down. This next sequence is called swimming shoulders. So please roll over onto your back and this will help us release stored tension in between the shoulder blades. So everybody on their belly. You might wanna look at me for a demonstration because there's one part of this that's a little tricky to teach. Nice yawning. Love it. All right, so the palms are face down. And the, the forehead is on the floor so that the neck is nice and long, and my toenails are pointed down. The first movement is lifting the upper body, but again, notice that I'm not arching my neck, just keeping it nice and long, and I'm also pressing my hips into the floor to create length with my lower spine, okay? Just to create some safety there. And the first one is using the shoulders like you're swimming. And notice how my head is slightly moving. In other words, I'm not keeping it rigid. This, again, it's kind of an organic movement, and an, an elliptical movement. I'm going much faster than you'll be moving, but just for the sake of demonstration. And then we'll rest. And the next one is more like coming forward and backward. But notice I'm not just going up and back. I'm trying to make a circle and then backward. And this, this is the one hard to explain, and I'm not sure how this is going to look, but it's really funny when I'm walking around <laughs> looking at you guys. So now you can laugh at me, okay? So it's like squeezing the elbows in and then out. Elbows in or shoulder blades? Um, shoulder blades are coming in and elbows are coming in and shoulder blades are going out. It, that, that's why this is really hard to teach. But you're wanting the the intention to do this with your blades with your blades okay you want to try do the best you can and be safe with this so you're going to be melting the tension in between your shoulder blades it's the next best thing to a massage if you can't get in to get a massage <laughs> so palms face down forehead on the floor keep the neck nice and long 
Lift the forehead off the floor, and when you're ready, bring the right shoulder forward and the left shoulder back. And just imagine your shoulders are swimming. So the palms are facing down underneath your shoulders. And try to resist going fast. Uh, the elbows are kind of doing whatever they want to do. <laughs> yeah, just just concentrate mostly on your shoulders and just it's kind of like pedals of a bicycle, right? One is going down and one is going up. What's the lower back doing? Uh, lower back to protect the lower back. You're kind of pushing your pelvis into the floor to create length to those lower for those lower vertebra. Make sure you're not holding your breath forward and backward, but elliptical. So lift your forehead off the floor and just let the head undulate slightly as the shoulders roll forward and backward. Breathe. Nice, Joanne. So with the eyes closed, just ask yourself with awareness, what muscles are you using to cooperate to make this smooth? Reverse the movement. One of the things that we're really intending to do in Hannah Somatic Education is to address sensory motor amnesia. And sensory motor amnesia is where the mind to muscle has literally, you've forgotten how to control and fine tune those muscles. So you're erasing the SMA right now. And relax. Did you reverse? <laughs> okay, good, thank you. Beautiful. Breathe. All right, now this is the funky one. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Hands, palms facing down underneath the shoulders. All right, and now as best you can, just start by squeezing the shoulder blades together and now try to pull them apart out to the side using your elbows. So just try in and out. So squeeze the shoulders in and then broaden your shoulders out. Start with that. And you want to come down probably a little with your head so that you're um, not contracting the neck so much. Yeah. Tuck the pelvis underneath you. Does that feel weird? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, can you see how this would be hard to teach? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's okay. And when you're finished, relax. And roll. What? Oh, there's not a lot of elliptical action in this one. <laughs> All right, come down and rest. And um, go ahead and bring your uh, right ear to the floor. The right ear to the floor, arms by your side. good to thaw out all the tension in the shoulders in that last one. And now let's work on the neck a little bit. Bring your hands right underneath your shoulder blades again. And the right ear is still on the floor. And now mostly using your upper body strength, lift your head off the floor. Your hands are also there for support on the ground. But now slowly start turning your head with your chin moving over to the right. And then really look over that right shoulder and then slowly bring your left ear to the floor. When your left ear touches the floor, let it all go. I call this quick neck release. So let's, when you're ready, engage your upper back muscles and your neck muscles and lift the head. Keep it at an angle and then when you're up there, then slowly turn. But also another tip in this is to keep the chin closer to the chest so those upper vertebra, vertebra are long and then eventually bring your right ear to the floor. So at your own pace, but again, as you've heard me say many times this class, make sure that you rest between each repetition. There's almost an urge to keep going, but your brain needs to register the muscle contracted and then fully released. Sometimes we carry secret tension in our neck, and now you have the invitation to discover that and then let it go. 
So make sure that it's smooth. Make sure that you're breathing. That looks great. And as you come down, soften everything and let it all go. Good job. Maybe one more time to each side. Nice, Joanne. Nice, Mari. neutral. Maybe bring your arms down to your side and I think we had our right ear on the floor. I, let's try the left ear to the floor. I think. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Let it all go. Get flat. Ah. What can you do to surrender with gravity to let your body just sink down? two more movements and then we're going to have a nice long shavasana and then a little break. So this next one, bring your right hand, uh, your palms underneath your shoulder blades again. Your left ear is still on the floor. Guiding yourself with the right shoulder, start picking up your upper body and start looking underneath your right shoulder and keep lifting and looking behind. So you're lifting, 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 looking back behind your right shoulder and then slowly come down. And when your left ear touches the floor, let it all go. Are we looking under our arm and shoulder or over? Over. Uh -huh. But your eyes are actually closed. So, mm -hmm. And you're, you're, each time you do it, see if you can guide your right shoulder blade in a slightly different angle as you come up. And remember, it doesn't matter how high you go. Just be in your own comfort zone and feather into it. Ah, beautiful. Next time your head touches the floor, we can do the other side. So this is a great one to help increase range of motion, turning left and right. For example, when we're driving our car and you're having to look over your shoulder behind you, this is a wonderful one to create more space for that. You really have to check in with yourself when your head touches the floor because I see some of you are still holding on at that very last moment. Yeah, switch to the other side. All right, and if you can, toenails are facing down on the floor. Sometimes that, if your feet are cramping, then do whatever you need to do to be comfortable. And then relax the uh, gluteal muscles when you come down as well. I notice I can see some of your booties engaged and holding on. So make sure that's all go. All let's go. All right. Thank you. Good job. And now roll over onto your side. And I'm going to show you one of my favorite movements. And this is going to be really interesting. It might be like a demolition derby because this is a big class. Um, can I demonstrate with you, Earhart, the flamingo? flamingo? The flamingo, come on up here. This is my friend Earhart, and he teaches somatic yoga as well. He's a great teacher and body worker. I just got an amazing Thai massage from him recently. Quite nice. Um, so go ahead and come to the floor and come into a twist with your knees to the right. Oh, flamingo is uh, bringing your body all the way down. That's right, bring your knees a little bit more um, right angles to your hips. Okay, so the idea is to keep your bottom leg and your um, bottom hand, uh, your, excuse me, you're on your, your right leg and your right arm on the floor. And now bring your left arm up and over to meet your top hand. And as the top hand touches the bottom hand, then roll your shoulder forward and your forehead on the floor, relax the head, and then extend the left leg leading with the big toe. 
Now hold it here for a second, Earhart, and keep your hips rolling forward, but now extend your left leg. Extend your left leg. There. And roll this hip forward. There. Is that feeling okay? Nice deep twist, very deep twist. And now bring the um, top arm up and over as the knee comes towards the chest. There you go, exactly. And this knee can be bent, and then just relax it down towards the floor. Yeah. So you're watching the, the one hand that's moving, you're watching the hand the whole time. So go ahead and lift the arm up and over. Top hand will meet, the forehead will roll on the floor down and the hips rolling forward and then extend with that top foot. And then the knee comes to the chest as the arm comes up and over. This feels really good. It's one of my favorites. Yeah, that's it. Gotcha, wanna try? Yeah? That's why I said it's gonna be a demolition derby because just know that you're gonna be giving little love taps to your neighbor probably during this one. So let's start with everybody, thank you at heart. Um, let's start with the uh, knees bent to the right. And the arms open. And the left arm comes up like you're tracing an arc. Bring that left arm up and over to meet your bottom hand. Right. <laughs> and then reach past your bottom hand and extend that left leg. Big toe on the floor. Roll the left hip forward. And now the left arm comes back up following that arc. Left knee comes to the chest, and the head is just rolling on the floor the whole time. And at your own pace, make this a yummy movement, you guys. Make this feel good. This is massaging. This is an integrated movement. Nice, Linda. Beauteous. So that top arm pretty much stays straight the whole time. That's good, keep going. And then this, exactly, and that hip rolls forward. Beautiful, perfect. So Justine, let the head just roll on the floor and then bring the knee back up. Yeah. Now you, now you do. Now you do, that's part of the education is figuring it out. Yeah, there really is never a wrong anything. It's just a discovery. So, nice range of movement. This is awesome. Ah, uh, you're flexible. Does that feel good? Uh-huh. All right, when you're ready, then you're looking over at your right hand and let that come arcing up and over. Close your eyes and make it delicious. You're, you're fine. You're fine. And now play with that top hip, you guys. When the arms, when the fingers are touching each other, play with that hip rolling forward and you'll feel like a deeper, nicer twist. But know your limits. Oh, oh plump. I'm sorry. There you go. Nice to land. And you can bend your knees a little bit more and I'll create a firmer base. And maybe a deeper twist. <coughs> How's it going over here? Yeah. You got it? Okay, so keep your um, leg extended for this part and roll the hip forward. Yeah. There you go. And then as your arm comes up and over, then you roll the hip backwards. There you go. Ah, okay. Maybe one more time. when you're finished. Isn't that a nice way to finish the sequence? We're going to be taking a break after this, you guys. So just take a few moments to rest. 
and let everything go. So the ankles are flopped open to the sides, palms are facing the ceiling, shoulders relaxed. 